News Watch 10. Then, out of the blue, he offers me this dream commission. What kind of commission? It'd be this incredible uh, house on the hill. You know, it would be spectacular, Morgan. You know, the kind of project that ends up in magazines, you know? No, you gotta go down. Oh, come on, Brett. I need this arm no, to down, operate. Down. Okay. okay, down. <sighs> the thing is, I just don't know whether I should take it, because... There are some complications. What kind of complications? He wants a date. He wants too many windows. He wants everything so in plan. What? Is Alton Spader. The notorious, my boss, Alton Spader? Yes. I mean, he is trying to ruin my best friend's career, but I mean, this could make my career. I mean, what should I do? Come on in. Hey! Surprise! Welcome home! Thanks. Welcome Mary, back. Charlie, you're home. Charlie. Hey. <laughs> Hello, Iris. Oh, Grant. Amanda's not in yet. Oh. Is she feeling all right? I left a message with her last night. She never got back to me. As far as I know, she's fine. Good. Well, ask her to call me as soon as possible, would you? Business or pleasure? Oh, dare I ask. Amanda needs a respite from this pressure cooker, and I have just the place to whisk her away to. Sorry, Senator, I don't believe that Amanda is yours to whisk. Amanda, don't forget you have John and Kelsey's hearing this afternoon. I'm there if I don't collapse first. I can't believe Rachel didn't show up for it. I mean, they need her to testify. Well, me too, but it doesn't seem like Mom's doing anything by the book these days. Sweet young Maggie. Good day to you, Amanda. Carl, I understand you know where my mother is? Is that so? Yes, Jack and Paulina said that you were uh, together in New York. Well, I'm uh, not in New York now, am I? No, you're not. You're in my house. So, unless those flowers are for me, I would think that you thought my mother was here, too. Yes, indeed I did. Yes, I thought she was on her way home. Clearly. I was mistaken. Surprise! Rachel! Oh, oh my God, I don't believe it. Oh, honey, get in here. <laughs> oh, I have missed you so much. Oh, uh, me too. Here, let me have your coat. You look fabulous. Oh, this is about as pulled together as I get these Well, days. I think it's perfect for you. Well, it's not going to do for John and Kelsey's hearing. Oh, you are going to testify. Yeah, I thought I'd give it my best shot. Honey, that's wonderful. You know, you could save their lives. I mean, they've been so desperate to try and find you. Yes, so I hear. Oh, of course you have. I'm sure your family's been talking your ear off, haven't they? My family doesn't know I'm in town. And I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell them. How can I ever forget one of my special customers, little Michael? Every week he'd come in, and every time he'd say, his eyes shining. Stork reason, please, Mrs. Lang. One of those reasons I had to give him immediately. The others I put in a bag for him. Now there is Stork chocolate reason, a long-lasting chewy chocolate caramel covered with rich chocolate, just right for Michael. Stork chocolate reason, please, Mrs. Lang. <laughs> and Michael still eats the first one immediately. Stork chocolate reason, the everlasting chocolate chew. Get one more close-up, Joe. Meg, I thought you were home with a miserable cold. I was, but now I feel better. Did you take Sudafed for your stuffy nose? No, I took Maximum Strength Comtrex. It does it all. Or Trimaton for sneezing? 
I only took Comtrex. Extra strength Tylenol for headaches, body aches, Robitussin maximum strength for your cough? Uh-uh. All I took was Comtrex. She'd have to take each of these to get all the relief that's in two maximum strength Comtrex. There's another story of town. Let's roll. Maximum strength Comtrex does it all. If you love peanut butter, I've got good news. This is new Peter Pan Smart Choice. Good peanut butter taste with 25% less fat. Over here, we have good peanut butter taste. And over here, we have good peanut butter taste with 25% less fat. So which one is the smart choice? Hey, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure that one out. New Peter Pan Smart Choice is 25% smarter. Observe dry eyes. Red eyes, symptoms for which science created clear eyes. Unlike the other leading eye drop, clear eyes removes redness and as an ingredient to moisturize. The difference is clear. Clear eyes. So you know where she is? Yes, well, well, well we've been in touch. So maybe she saw the ad news at the hearing yesterday. Uh, Rachel did not specifically say that she was coming home. It was a natural conclusion on my own part. Well, she isn't. Otherwise, we would have heard. Obviously. I was wrong. Forgive me for troubling you. Carl, wait. How is she? Your mother's very well, Amanda. Tell me about her. Where is she? What has she been doing? I wish I could. But if Rachel wants you to be privy to that information, she must tell you herself. Carl, you've seen her. You know. Do you not understand? The information is not mine to share. All I can say to you is that your mother is well and you needn't be worried. Worry? Carl, let me tell you about worry. My mother left here before Thanksgiving. My little girl thinks that everyone she loves in her life just walks out on her. I've been trying to run a, run a company and keep a family together while I pray that my mother is okay. Well, you wouldn't need to pray. If you'd left the company and the family in Rachel's hands where they rightly belong. Good day to you, Amanda. Here, to the sweetest of the chorus. I'm gonna go say goodbye to Ellie. Carl? Carl! Yes, little one. Listen, don't get wound up about Amanda. She just doesn't understand that you care about Rachel. And you do. Well, sure. I, I mean, I can tell by the way you talk about her. And, uh, how might that be? You're concerned and protective. You could blow the whistle on her, but you won't. And, well, I kind of like the thought of you two together. She deserves some romance in her life. Yes, indeed she does. So, um, if something happened between you two, not saying that it did, of course, okay. because I don't know, no. but, um, well, I think Rachel would be happier than she's been in a very long time. You will get in touch with me if you hear from Rachel. You bet. Do the same for me. The woman is under a lot of pressure, Mr. McKinnon. And you know just how to let that steam off, right? Well, her only other option is to be uh, subjected to all of this hot air in this office. The quarterlies need signing, Iris. No, I'll, I'll now. get to them. You're rather touchy when it comes to Amanda's private life, aren't you? Amanda is the head of a major corporation. She can't run off every time that you need to fire your jets. Well, what's the problem? I should think you'd be able to take the helm for a few days. Well... You'd be salivating at the chance, right, Jake? We are a team. We work better together. You plan to extend that partnership into after-hours work? I'd think about it if I were you. Is that a warning? Call it an observation. You may be able to impress Amanda with your... Um, newfound job skills in your slip talk, but you'll never be able to scrape enough Lassiter dirt from beneath those fingernails to truly measure up to her. <laughs> That's big talk, Grant, especially coming from a man who married Vicki Hudson, Lassiter calendar girl. Amanda demands better than you, McKinnon. What Amanda needs is a man who doesn't put the same stale moves on her that he put on all of his old girlfriends. Does that sound familiar? No. Should it? How about long-stemmed roses, schlocky greeting cards, 
Dinner at Tops with expensive, expensive champagne. And then if she measures up to that first lady status, an all-expense-paid trip to the capital. Does that sound like how you're going to be whisking her away? Well, that wouldn't be any of your business now, would it? Well, your information, Senator, Amanda is furious with you. She could take a, a number at a supermarket deli and feel more special. Just tell your partner I'd like to speak with her. I'll tell my partner what I always tell her about you. I tell her to watch her back. You never know. There may be a bullet in her future. I was watching my own daughter disintegrate before me. She lost all her confidence, her self-esteem, and there wasn't a damn thing I could do about it. And then she left town. You haven't heard from her? No. I mean, I got a postcard. New Orleans, but no phone or address. I just feel so scared for her. I know she's out there frightened and she's all alone. Oh, honey, she has a lot of smarts and a lot of courage. I know that, but she probably doesn't even know that she doesn't have to run anymore, that she can come home. She will. She'll find that out. Well, at least you came home. One of my prayers was answered. And I'm fine. Maybe you can let your family know that at some point. I... Don't know if I'm ready for that yet. And frankly, I'm not so certain my family is ready to have me back. But it's been so long, Rachel. Yeah, I know. And I've changed. Things are different now. I think they can accept that if you, if you let them, if you give them a chance. I'm just so afraid when I go back home, everybody's going to expect everything to pick up right where it left off. I'll be the shoulder to cry on, the problem solver, the general factotum all around mom. No, I thought you loved that. I used to. I loved every minute of it. Because of, of what it represented, of what it, it gave me. What was that? My sense of family, that we were a unit. We were all pulling together, going the same direction, standing for the same things, carrying on Mac's legacy. But when they turned against him, mm. it was as though I was... I was among a bunch of strangers. It was pointless. It was empty. I know. You felt all alone, didn't you? So, for my sanity's sake, it was better for me to just back off and get some objectivity. So, how is your sanity doing these pretty, days? Pretty good. Is it? Yeah, <laughs> I was able to get to Rachel Davis a little bit, the lady I was before I was Mrs. Mackenzie Corey. So then your trip was a success? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was wonderful, actually, and then there was moments when it was lonely and, and difficult. Well, did you meet anybody, make any oh, new friends? the greatest lady, Loretta Delahanty. She um, runs a hair salon. She's a hairdresser. Oh, I thought I noticed a new sheen to your mane. Well, I lived right above her salon. You're kidding no. me. <laughs> and um, I helped out. I gave my share of perms and shampoos. No, yes. really? It was nice. It was just like being in mom's old salon, you know, and helping out. It's nice to be back in the mix. Sounds like uh, you'd like to go back to New York. Well, as much as it was a wonderful experience, uh, there was one thing that happened that has made me not too eager to go back. You got hurt? How? Oh, you know, I was just opening myself up to all sorts of new experiences and... I guess I wasn't examining each one very closely, and so I did. I got hurt. A man? Did you meet a new man? The good news is that um, I've got my rent paid up through February, and I can go back any time I want. Okay. Okay. You know that I love you a lot, and you can come here and talk to me about anything at any time. You know that? Yeah. Okay. And I will when I'm ready. What's next? What are you going to do? I guess I'm going to have to go to the family and uh, find out where they are and what they want and let them know where I am and what I want. I'm going to have to do that before I know whether I can come home again. I'd like a cup of coffee. Want one? Yeah. Okay. And then I'll get ready for the hearing. Okay. Rachel, uh, after the hearing, I mean, if you're not 
Hurts for a star. How Tanya Harding's cover-up was blown after lunch with the FBI. Plus, Oprah's elegant 40th birthday bash turns into a Hollywood slumber party. Reach for a star. See Di blow her top as Charles dumps his mistress. Reach for a star. Why married with children star Katie Seagal's pregnancy has her worry. Plus, the Jacksons. Michael's sexy dance partner says, I tried everything to seduce him. And his sister Janet Jackson hiding a secret baby? Reach for a star. Here he comes. Coffee? Cappuccino. Vanilla cappuccino. Mocha cappuccino. Make that a decaf mocha. Okay. <laughs> Only Maxwell House makes cappuccino in all these flavors. One cappuccino, one mocha decaf cappuccino. And for you, vanilla. Maxwell House cappuccinos. The magic without the machine. Question, if your cold pill's so good, how come your symptoms keep coming back? Because your pill doesn't work 24 hours. Introducing Epidac 24, the first cold tablet so effective, just one works 24 hours. Look, most cold pills drop off after six hours, the rest after 12, so your symptoms keep coming back. But just one Epidac gives consistent relief for 24 hours, so your symptoms don't come back. New 24-hour Epidac keeps cold symptoms from coming back. I love performing, though it's a lot more fun with an audience. I love sweet things, too, like sun-sweet pitted prunes. They're so tasty and fat-free. It's love, all right. It's sun-sweet. Charlie, yes. your mother didn't really have an elevator in mind for the perfect birthing setup, you see. Or the most peaceful. You know what? Doesn't matter. All right. <laughs> no, she means it. <laughs> oh, come on. You obsessed for nine months about having this child in your bed. Yes, I know. Yeah, you had a, 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 what, a midwife chained at your front door. Well, it's, it's over. I'm over it. How can you be? I mean, it was like one disaster after another. Well, as far as I'm concerned, it was a miracle. I remember seeing her born. I remember holding her in my arms. But what about the screaming pain? What about all that stuff? What, it, what was it she yelled? She yelled that she'd rather give birth to a bowling league. I never no, said that. she never said that. Did you? No, I, I gave birth to a precious angel with ten perfect toes and ten perfect little fingers. In my nose. Yes, she is absolutely perfect. And she is the answer to all our prayers. <laughs> yes. Yes, I did. Excuse me, is this a new ritual whereby if the wind blows that you, you kiss and hug and... Oh, well, the, the wind chimes are Frederick and Juliet's way of saying they're happy for us. Okay, I'll bite. Who's mm -hmm. Frederick and Juliet? They built this house about 100 years ago, oh. maybe a little more, and uh, moved in right mm -hmm. after they married. Yes, and they lived happily ever after, same as us. And mm -hmm. they still live here? Oh, yeah, they, they look out for us. They helped us through a lot. Especially through the hardest times when Frankie and I weren't sure we were going to be able to stick it out. They told us that we needed to be together. That we were meant to be. Yeah. And here we are. Three of us now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know you. Oh, don't eat that. You're going to need it. <laughs> Any other messages? Oh, you have the most important ones. Could you hold that for one minute? I'm busy, Dave. I just want you to look at this. Circulation figures are phenomenal. Yes, the golden team strikes again. Little wow. high five. Yeah, we did, you know, didn't we? I wish Rachel would walk right through that door right now so that she could see how well we've done. Someone isn't listening. <gasps> Thank goodness the office wasn't trashed. Why would it be? Well, I just assumed after that little discussion that Jake and Grant had. What? Grant was here? Just for a minute. Too bad you weren't here to see it. I bet it was quite a show. No blood. Oh, pity. She exaggerates. Why didn't you tell me Grant came You're by? You're mad at the guy anyway. I figure, why waste your time? Mad or not, I do not need you to protect me from Grant Harrison. J what did he want? He just wanted you to call. That's all? That's it. You know something? I don't believe this. How can you be so smart about business and so dumb about men? Jake, I don't need you to warn me. Oh, unless I'm sorry. Is this one of your ultra-smooth moves? Should I just lean in for the kiss or you're going to surprise me? I apologized for the kiss. It's over. Hmm. Well, what is this I see all over your face? Could it be jealousy? 
Try outrage. No, I don't think so. You know something? You get involved with that political scum bucket again. Let me tell you what's going to happen. I am going to have to, to pick you up as you're crying over the quarterlies. And quite frankly, I have better things to do. I'm a big girl, Jake. I can handle myself. Oh, that's too. what Vicky said. That's what, that's what Paulina said. You think that Grant... You think that Grant doesn't know that, that you would like to be taken care of instead of always taking care of everyone else? You think that he doesn't know that, that you miss having someone to love? So he's sensitive to a woman's needs. I don't think that's too heinous. Sorry. It will be when he turns it around on you. The only needs Grant Harrison has are his own, both public and private. He is going to use you and hurt you. Don't you have something else to do? Okay, I'm out of here. But you do yourself a favor. When, when that bell goes off in your head that says Grant's dating machine is up and running, and that he's playing with your feelings, you listen to that. Because it's right. Mackenzie Corey's letter, sir. Yes. Forgive me, sir, but it seems to hold so much fascination for you. This letter, Ito, contains everything that Rachel knows, but cannot prove. If I deliver it to her, I deliver her heart's desire. But at what price? Sir? I shall lose her, Ito. Well, I may have already. Yes. Thank you. Good news, sir. Maggie Corey called to inform you that Mrs. Corey has been located. Where? The Bayway Motel. Uh, would you like me to return the letter to the safe, sir? Yes. No. I shall see you anon. They're routine forms. Just sign. You know, it must be uh, something having the two most notorious men in Bay City pursuing you. I'm not biting hers. Then again, of course, if what Paulina says is true about Carl and Rachel, you're just following in little mama's footsteps. Iris, your fangs are showing. Yes, Dee Dee. Put them through. Hello, Grant. It's good to hear your voice. Did you get my messages? I've been busy. I need to talk to you privately. I can't today. Well, you have to eat lunch, don't you? I'm having lunch with my daughter. Please. Amanda, just a few minutes. No pressure, I promise. It would mean a lot to me. OK, uh, meet me at home. Bye. I'll be up for the rest of the day. Dee Dee knows where to get a hold of me. Oh, have a good one. <sighs> Great, terrific, wonderful, and sublime. What's got you flying so high? Oh. Uh... So now it's uh, time for a little gastric report, so <laughs> I think we better step back. <laughs> it is best to always have a towel on your shoulder. Listen, any time you need a babysitter, I'm here. Oh, you be careful. I'll take you up on that. Well, I would love it. <laughs> yes. I'd love to. You sure? Me? My godfather. <laughs> Comes with a lot of responsibility. I'm honored. You think I can handle it? Oh, I know you can handle it, kid. You've proven that. A godmother? Me? You helped bring Charlie into the world. Well, yeah, but I mean, that, that's a big responsibility. Oh, you can handle it. I mean, you two share something very special already. Oh, she's really a miracle, Frankie. I know how much you love her. Oh, Godmother, I love it. <laughs> Frankie. So, what do I do? You'll be yourself. You'll be a great role model. Oh, gosh, well, I hope she doesn't ask me any questions about religion. I mean, I haven't really figured that out for myself yet. I mean, I have all these questions, you Frankie, know? Frankie, yeah. can we talk? I'll be in a minute, but you see, that's exactly why you'll be so wonderful. Really? I will? Yeah. I, mean, I don't want my daughter getting pat answers to all her questions. I want her to have the freedom to experience the world on her own, the way you do. 
Well, then how can I say no? Great. Frankie, I am really honored. You know, I, I think it's time that she took a nap, oh, don't you? Yeah. Come on, wait till you see your new crib, sweetheart. That's our cue, Brett. I have to get to work anyway. Oh, yeah, and my shift at the Daily Grind starts soon. I'll drop you off. Okay, okay. Thanks again, Thank you, guys. It was great. Welcome home. Thanks Welcome for that home. surprise. We'll see yeah. you soon. Thanks, Brett. Bye-bye, honey. Thanks. I'll see you soon. Bye. Right here. How would you like to help me put your daughter down for her first nap in her new home? I'd love it after I ask you something. What? How do you feel about multiple godparents? Is it? Maid service. Tell? Maggie, get in <laughs> here. What are you doing here? Listen, before you give me the third degree, can I have a hug? <laughs> Welcome home. Well, how did you find me? Well, I was supposed to go over to Felicia's to drop off some stuff for her celebrity auction for the hospital, and I heard your voice. Oh. So I just followed you here. Oh, great. Oh, you're not angry at me, are you? It's just... You were so close. I wanted to say hello. No, no, I'm not angry. I missed you, Rachel. I missed you, too. It's like there's been this big, gaping hole in Bay City ever since you left. You must wear a size 110 shoes. Oh, that's not what I hear. I hear you've been doing very well without me. Well, it's not the same. Amanda doesn't yell as well. And it's just the family's not together. And well, you have to come back. And just let me know when, and I'll call everyone. No, wait a minute. Listen, Maggie. The family doesn't know I'm back, and I don't want them to. OK? So you mustn't tell them. How come? Um, personal reasons. I have some things I have to uh, sort out. So promise me, OK? Yeah, uh, sure. I, I won't tell them anything. And you're not to tell Carl where I am. Did something happen between you and Carl? Um, I knew he saw you. I'm you not were... going to talk to you about Carl, all right? If you don't want to talk about Carl, perhaps you'll talk to him. What did you do? Did you follow my granddaughter? Are you that low? Don't blame me, Rachel. I've always been able to find you. Maggie, would you be so kind as to excuse us? No, Maggie, you stay right here. She just got here. You're the one who should leave. I have nothing to say to you. Maggie, please. I, I have to go anyway, Rachel. I have to study. Bye. You remember your promise? you came to say and then just leave. Bad enough that Daddy's ethics have been questioned. But to have the two CEOs carrying on, the tabloids will be raving. So what? It's the 90s. Nobody cares. That's not true. The board cares. The stockholders care. And I do not care to have the Corey name muddied any further. Sticks and stones. Hank, I don't think you realize this company is still under threat. We could lose it. Now what next? You'll be suggesting that we go off and spend the rest of our life fly fishing again. All I'm suggesting is that you leave it alone, let it take its course. Darling, you're not still mad at me, are you? I'll tell you what. We'll table this conversation if you agree to have lunch with me. Oh, I'd love to. How you doing, Hank? Hey, Hank. Yeah. All right. So, what do you say we spend a little time in our own office, huh, Iris? You know, Jake, I don't think it matters where I work. I can still hear the, hear the sound of your melodious voice bellowing through the hallways. My ears are still ringing. Well, maybe you should spend less time listening to my conversations with Amanda. You know, in spite of your self-proclaimed appeal to women, you really don't understand them very much, do you? What are you talking about? Amanda, if you really knew my sister, you'd know that the minute you tell her not to do something, she will. Well, I asked her to be my business partner, and voila. <laughs> That's right, and you told her to stay away from Grant, didn't you? 
So now what do you think she's going to do? You'll have to make it fast. Ellie and I are having lunch together. Ah, mother-daughter lunch. Just the kind of thing I'd like to do with my own child one day. You will, when there's a teacher conference. Yeah, but you always make time. It shows how much you love her. Look, Grant, I don't need to be schmoozed, okay? What do you want? I'm here to apologize. I haven't treated you very fairly. If I've hurt you, I'm sorry. I come with the olive branch, Rachel. Now, I've tried unsuccessfully to help you transform your life. But consider this. What if I could give you something that would literally transform everything? Something that would restore your hope and give you back your dream. No one can do that, least of all you. Yes, I can. Say the word. And Corey Enterprises is yours. Say the word, and Mr. McKinnon is out on his lower class ear. This I can make happen. And if I say it? Just say the word. And I'll be in your debt again. No, no. On and the what contrary. more will you want from me? And what will you be keeping from me this time? Please. Please, will you allow me to elaborate? No, I'm not interested. I caution you, Rachel, not to refuse this offer in haste. No, on the contrary, I think it's very important for me to refuse you quickly and promptly. What do you think? I enter into this lightly? Oh, no, I am sure you plotted and planned like every other time you've manipulated me. Manipulated? Manipulation? Is that what you call the days and the nights that you and I spent together we didn't in New York? We spend any nights together. We should have. And we would have. But for a momentary lapse of reason. Oh, yes. I see. It was a tactical error. Keeping from me my friends and family who were looking for me. Trying to spirit me out of this country so I would be kept from people who needed me here. You were needed elsewhere. It was my mistake, wasn't it? I let my guard down. I trusted you. Oh, you did more than that. And you know it. You did much more. You allowed yourself to experience true feeling for me. As I did for you. Oh, don't push me away, Rachel. Allow me to help. You know, for a woman who ran off to New York to find herself, you learn surprisingly little. Oh, I learned a great deal. It just wasn't anything new. I learned once again I have to be careful. Yes, that's right. You chose to be afraid. Yeah, well, can you blame me? Where is the Rachel Davis, the woman that I knew in New York? You don't have any part in her life. There was a freshness to her, a newfound sense of wonder. The wonder of her senses. Sensual, romantic, and ever so much alive. It wouldn't work. Yes, it would. It would, Rachel. It could, if you allow yourself not to be afraid. Allow yourself to feel something. You know, I. I may be the only man for you. No. I already met the right man for me. Oh, yes. Yes, lest we forget, lest we forget the sainted Mackenzie Corey. Are you so, so terrified of your feelings for me that you're prepared to spend the rest of your days worshipping the memory of a dead man? This discussion is over. Mate. You can't make love to a corpse, Rachel. You can't feel his heartbeat alongside yours. Since Mac, I'm the only man for you. In fact, I think I may be the only man who knows how to handle you. Handle me? Yes. Oh, how dare you? I dare. I dare because it's the truth. No, it isn't. Mac was the most honorable man I've ever known. You couldn't even shine his shoes, so just get away from me. I shall not return with this offer. Yeah, well, fine with me. 
Think about it. I walk out this door. And who will there be? You'll have no one. I'll have plenty. Yes, you'll be surrounded. Surrounded by ungrateful children and their children's children. And there'll be no art. And there'll be no company. And emotionally, they'll use you up. Get out. And what will you become? What lies ahead for you? Huh? A sad, bitter, old woman. Oh, Rachel. 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 I've tried. I've tried. They've all been pre-approved by Well, I, I like to look at them anyway, just in case you never know. One of them might say jerk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jake, I'd uh, really think about what I said there. Deny the Cory won in action, and that's the only one they'll take. You know something? I usually make it a point not to listen to a word that you say, Iris. The Cory woman can be so stubborn. Even little old Paulina. As soon as the family objected to you, oof, she went flying straight into your arms. Well, now, that was the right decision, wasn't it? Well, that's why I haven't warned Amanda about you, you see. Because, heaven forbid, that I would make you look one inch better than the cretin you are. You know, Iris, why is it that you're always picking on me about Amanda? We're friends and business partners, that's it. Uh-huh. Then why all the protestations about Grant? Because Grant is a user and he's going to hurt her. I'll end up picking up the pieces. I need Amanda to run this company. Personally, I couldn't think of anything more wonderful than to have my sister marry to you, West Senate. A U.S. senator that is currently married. Now, that is the sleaziest of the sleaze. There you go, Iris. All the John Hancocks you could possibly want. Yes! I thought you loved flowers and dinners by candlelight and surprise trips to wings with blazing fireplaces. And... Grant, look, I do. But not when they're moves you've perfected on other women. I never meant to insult you. If I've done those things with other women, it never meant that I thought less of you. It didn't make me feel very special, either. I hear you now. Please accept my apology. If I could think of 100 new and special ways to please Amanda Corey... Why are you trying so hard? Because I like you. Yeah, but I feel like you're paying me off for spending time with you. I mean, these big trips and... And these big gifts. Why did you ever think I needed that or wanted that? Oh. Truth. I guess I've always figured that uh, women are attracted to me because of uh, power and connections. Paulina, maybe. Vicky, definitely. What about Amanda? Well, right now I run a company, and at the same time I'm trying to run a household. It's enough power for me. Okay, I promise you, I'll stop trying to impress you. You don't have to. I mean, you already have. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't want to be swept away to a warm beach or uh, taken to a fancy party from time to time. Just a different beach and a different party. Things are always different when I'm with you. And a little less on the flattery would no, be okay. That, that's not flattery, it's how Grant, I Grant, look. <laughs> I was wrong not to see who you really are, Amanda. You're different from any of the other women that I've ever known. And my feelings for you are very real. But I like three. You and Charlie and I make three. Yeah, but three godparents. But that's three times the love. Three times the gift. But is it kosher? Oh. I mean, is it Emily Post? You're looking for convention from us. Where was my head? <laughs> well, what was I thinking? Uh, our devotee is calling. I'll, I'll get her. I'll oh. get her. It's okay, Charlie. Dad's coming. I get the door. All right, Jake. Wait. Felicia. Oh, rats. What is all this? Well, I was hoping to fill up the whole living room here. I guess I'll have to go back to the toy store. No. no. I have... Oh, oh no. I fell asleep coming back down the stairs. Oh, look. <laughs> How's our little Aquarius? Oh, uh, well, she's a little hyperactive at the moment, but... Uh... <laughs> Do, uh, tell me, do Aquarians uh, sleep more than most people, or is it just this baby thing? I don't know. I think you have to ask Laszlo. Having Laszlo do Charlie's chart was the perfect shower gift. 
They should be ready soon. Laszlo had to redo a couple of uh, calculations. What kind of calculation? I didn't know that. Well, you know, changing two godparents to three godparents. Ah, uh, you see what uh -huh. Cass is trying to say in his own cowardly fashion. How do you feel about sharing the godmother limelight? Oh, my, don't tell me. Emma? Is she horning in again? No, no? there was a little confusion. Well, you see, the, the only confusion is that I didn't clear this with Cass first. But, you see, as far as I'm concerned, it's a given that, that you are Charlie's godmother. But, you see, you see, Brett ha has, like, just miraculously appeared at all of these major events in our life. And I think that maybe we think that, that maybe the, the cosmos is trying to tell us something. So we, we hope you don't mind. Oh, of course I don't mind. Good. Precious little darling deserves all the love and attention she can get. <laughs> so, let's just bring out all the godparents. <laughs> could, be, uh, could be the power company, right? Or it could be our absentee landlord right. forgot to pay the electric bill again. Maybe. Well, so much for your double espresso. And so much for any patrons, period. Hey, 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 hey. Well, I can't really steam milk with that. That's not what I was thinking. Well, what are you gonna do? I mean, it's the middle of the day. So what? We can still have fun, can't we? We can still pretend, can't we? What else do we have to do? Come on. Well, so Ryan loses a day's worth of business. It's his fault. It's all his fault. You take a load off. Okay. I think I will. So. What are you going to do about Spader? Mm. To tell you the truth, as soon as I saw Frankie with the baby, I forgot all about him. I can't believe I'm so happy <laughs> <laughs> to be Charlie's godfather. Oh, I know. Gosh, can you believe us godparents? I mean... Frankie and Cass are trusting us with their child's future. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I s being godparents, that means we're pretty connected in a pretty major way for a pretty long time. We don't really know each other very well, do we? So what? Well, I mean... You're a blood relative and all, and I just <laughs> was accidentally in an elevator when Frankie decided to give birth. So what? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I just, I wasn't sure that that was, you know, a good reason for us to be tied together like this. Can I tell you a secret? I can't think of anybody else that I'd rather be a godparent with than you. Could be a long haul. Could be a long and fascinating journey. I gotta go. Now? Good luck with the power problem. The electricity. Yeah, thanks. Oh, Brett. Yeah? I'm glad we talked. Me too.
this is Greg Liggins. A new treatment for autistic children is showing promise. Tonight on Newswatch 10, it may actually reverse symptoms of the condition. And just how accurate is the old farmer's almanac? Join us at 5.30 and 6.